All right, welcome back to the channel. So it looks like we might get some new things popping in the welterweight division. Mikey Garcia is saying that he is open to fighting Sean Porter or um, Terrence Crawford to get a shot at a 147 pound belt and ultimately to get a shot at a rematch against Errol Spence. But in the midst of these interviews, he actually says something pretty critical about Terrence Crawford, which is that Terrence Crawford is making himself look bad because although he's a really good fighter, highly skilled fighter, he's not fighting anybody that anybody wants to see. And that is really, you know, tearing his stock down. So two uh, very interesting observations from Mikey Garcia and the welterweight division. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So Mikey Garcia says that he is uh, willing to fight Sean Porter or Terrence Crawford to get uh, to get a uh, championship belt at 147 pounds. He's committed to being at 147 pounds, 147 pounds because he doesn't see anything for him self at 140 with all the belts locked up. And he wants a chance to avenge his loss to... Uh, Errol Spence Jr. All of those things I think are very are laudable and you know quite honestly I would not put it past Mikey Garcia to be able to win a belt at 147 pounds especially in the scenario that he very you know adroitly uh, laid out right Mikey Garcia you know I've seen you know there's some issues that I had with Mikey Garcia you know a couple years ago and kind of how he was jumping from weight class to weight class right i wanted to see him at one you know when he was the wbc oh, excuse me i think he was the ibf champion at 135 pounds to just clear out that division but you know he went a different route than i wanted him to but hey you know so he goes up to 140 gets a belt from sergey lipinitz then he comes back down unifies against uh robert easter jr and then loses at 147 to uh to errol spence jr but all in all a really really terrific fighter and i'm still looking forward to seeing you know what mikey garcia is going to do with the rest of his career so when he gave a series of interviews some of them were on behind the gloves other ones were on es news and i think they were all you know there at the same time i believe the reason that they're there is because uh uh ramirez at 140 pounds is supposed to be fighting uh, for undisputed title against Josh Taylor at 147. So Jose Ramirez and Josh Taylor uh, pretty much locked that division up, and they're going to be having an undisputed fight that the date of which is supposed to be announced soon. But those guys are in training camp, you know, for the fight, and Mikey Garcia is actually in the training camp working with Jose Ramirez, you know, to prepare for that fight. So with him there and him also saying that you know he's looking you know to set up his his fights in the next you know couple months you know we're going to be knowing what he's going to do now obviously one of the things that he said that he wanted to do was fight Manny Pacquiao that Manny Pacquiao fight according to Mikey Garcia he said that you know they don't know what's going to go on with that but he's going to give it about another month after if they can't settle something with Manny Pacquiao in the next month then he's going to move on now that's where we're going to we jump into the subject matter of this video is that he says, uh, Mikey Garcia says that he is very willing to fight Terrence Crawford. He's very willing to fight Sean Porter. And he's very willing to fight your Danis Ugas. You know, any of those top guys, he believes that he's in a position to win a fight against and would be willing to make that fight as long as it is a fight that fight fans find exciting, right? And that's kind of the balance that listening to Mikey Garcia uh, talk in these interviews that as he was, and I believe he's being very forthright, right? You know, very straight to the point when he was contemplating what his next moves were, it's a combination of, you know, what fight the fans find to be tremendously exciting and what fights will actually get him a title, right? And then what fight will obviously set him up for a redemption fight that he wants with Errol Spence Jr. Provided that Errol Spence Jr. does not, has not already left that weight class. And I think that there's a chance within the next year and a half that Errol will probably uh, leave the weight class because he has one fight, and I do believe it's his next fight against Yordanis Ugas, which will get him three of the four major belts. And if Terrence Crawford is acting as funny as he is now about doing an undisputed fight with Errol, then, you know, more than likely Errol would probably just, 
you know, go up to 154 pounds, despite the fact that, you know, he might run into, you know, his stablemate Jermel Charlo at that weight. However, you know, when I'm listening to Mikey Garcia, when Mikey Garcia was talking about it, he was also asked specifically about Terrence Crawford and the Errol Spence Jr. fight. He was asked, you know, who does he think would win that fight? You know, his explanation that he gave was pretty succinct and that he believed that, you know, you know, when you see Errol Spence Jr. fight, you're like, man, you know, it's going to be Errol Spence. But then when you see Terrence Crawford fight, oh, you think it's going to be Terrence Crawford. Right now, he says he's leaning towards Terrence Crawford because he thought that, Dan, that you know, maybe there's a little, still a little let, rust or or lack of confidence there on the part of Errol Spence, right? Um, and what he saw in the Danny Garcia fight, it could be because it was close to the accident or whatever, but that's how the Terrence Crawford conversation comes up. And then he hits Terrence Crawford on the head with with what is just very, very obvious, man, which is that Terrence Crawford he is, you know, I, I have no problem with anybody that says that they believe that Terrence Crawford can beat Errol Spence Jr. in the fight, right? I personally don't have any issue with Terrence Crawford's resume all the way up to 147 pounds. All the way, excuse me, yeah, up until he got to 147 pounds. At 135 pounds, the dude fought who he was supposed to fight, the people that were there. When he gets to 140, he gets he becomes undisputed. There was nobody else that had a belt, so I'm not quite sure what people really have to criticize him about at 140. But at 147, without a doubt, Terrence Crawford has taken a hatchet to his reputation at 147 pounds. And that is just not just – and it's not just the fact that he hasn't fought, you know, got people that, that – the you know regular boxing fans would think is a high level fighter right Jeff Horn he beats Jeff Horn for the title Jeff Horn is not Jeff Horn was is a one hit wonder right and a questionable one hit wonder at that with Manny Pacquiao but regardless he was a one hit wonder he hadn't really done he beat Manny Pacquiao he goes in and doesn't you know just gets mopped by Terrence Crawford looking like the level of fighter that people believe that he was when he refused to fight he being Jeff Horn uh, stepped away. I do believe he stepped away from being Errol Spence Jr.'s mandatory. He's just not that high level of fighter, and that showed itself after the Terrence Crawford fight. Same thing when you look at Jose Benavitez, man. Ho uh, ho yeah, ho Jose Benavitez, the brother of David Benavitez. The guy was not. A, he might have had two like catch up fights or tune up fights to get the Terrence Crawford fight, but hadn't been in the ring. I think for at least a year, year and a half before those two quick fights that he had. And now the fight was about two years ago and Jose Benavitez hasn't fought since. So it's not hard for people to think, yeah, Jose Benavitez is just not that level of competition. Then you go to the Egas Calvinakis's and it's like, it's Egas Calvinakis, man. Come on. And then who Amir Khan and Kell Brook. Now I was okay with the Kell Brook fight because I was like, look, that's the least acceptable of the acceptable fights that he can make. But still, that fight is not a Udaini Zugas fight. It's not a Sean Porter fight. It's not a Keith Thurman fight. It's not an Errol Spence Jr. fight. And quite honestly, it's really not even a Mikey Garcia fight, if you really think about it. Because Kell Brook was just completely over, completely overcooked. At the end of the day, though, Mikey, I think that Terrence Crawford should take Mikey Garcia's advice and fight somebody that the fans find interesting. Because at the end of the day, dude, I think Mikey Garcia is going to be very happy with his career, and he's going to be very happy with his career because universally people are going to say, hey, man, great career. You moved up. You took chances against Errol Spence Jr., and a fight that a bunch of people thought you would lose, that you were outsized, first, you know, first fight in 147, but at least you took the fight. What's the story going to be with Terrence Crawford other than you're, just, you're an immensely talented fighter who – um, look like you're the best in the world, but never tested yourself against anybody that people thought you could lose to. Anyway, so that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think. And with that, I'm out. Peace.